Okay, so now we've finished looking at who Mendel was, we're now going to look at some terminology that we need to understand in order to be able to move forward with our understanding of genetics. So to start off, we're going to start with looking at two terms called genes and alleles. And we need to be able to distinguish between the two of them and use examples, which is what the syllabus is asking us to do. So genes are the basic unit of heredity. Okay, we get one of our genes from our parents, from both of our parents, sorry. So we get one from our mother and we get one from our father. They are a segment of DNA that is found on a chromosome. Okay, so we know that our chromosomes are found in the nucleus of our cell and then the DNA makes up our genes. They code for a specific protein. Okay, so the genes are sections of DNA that have a particular code and then when we move through the blueprint of life topic and look at protein synthesis, we'll be going back and having a look at how these genes code for particular proteins. So proteins are important as they carry out lots of different jobs in our body. And lastly, genes always are found on the same spot of the chromosome of all organisms. And this is known as the location or the locus, sorry. Okay, so location, locus. So they're all found at the same point on the same chromosome. So this little image here is a little bit of an interesting fact. So did you know that on average, humans are 99% biochemically similar to each other? So look at the person next to you, or if you're alone, go and look at somebody on the street, and you'll see that between the two of you, there's 99% of your genes are similar to one another. So here we have an image of our cell. Okay, so this is an animal cell. As we can see, there's no cell wall, and inside there is the nucleus. So in the nucleus, our chromosome, which is that nice X shape that we usually see, and our chromosomes are made up of DNA. So as we can see, the lovely double helix structure of the DNA here. And when we look at the DNA, it's broken up into different sections, which we refer to as genes. Okay, so genes can be different lengths depending on the different genes. And as we said in the previous slide, they code for different proteins. And our genes, just like our DNA, are all made up of our nucleotides, which we'll have a look at later in the uh, Blueprint of Life topic as well. So a term that goes hand in hand with genes is the term alleles. So all organisms have two genes for each characteristic. Okay, so we can see here in our ice cream, we actually have one, two, three different flavors. So we could say here that there's three different alleles for the ice cream, okay? That's because there's more than one variation of a gene available, okay? So sometimes there's only two, but more, than, more often than not, there's more than two different uh, variations. And what we'll be looking at are those simple characteristics that only have two different, uh, different alleles available. So these alternative forms of the genes are called alleles, and they will have the same locus on separate chromosomes, just like our genes, okay? But with the case of alleles, we'll have two genes with two alleles on the same location. So if we look at the next slide, okay, this here shows us the chromosomes. So these are one pair of chromosome for individual A, a second pair of chromosome for individual B, and a third pair of chromosomes for individual C. We can see at the top here that blue eyes are obviously going to be colored blue and the brown eyes are colored in brown. So we can see in this section here is where the alleles for eye color exist. And we can see that individual A has one blue and one brown allele individual B has two brown alleles and individual C has two blue alleles. And as we move through the next couple of slides, we'll have a look at what this means and how this results in the different eye colors. Another two terms that we need to be able to distinguish between are the terms dominant and recessive. So from the two actual terms, you may be able to, dis to distinguish between them a little bit yourself to start off with. So dominant, we usually refer to as being stronger or overpowering, and recessive, we usually refer to as being weak. Now, when it comes to genetics, the dominant trait is not necessarily the stronger trait. It's just that if an individual has the dominant trait or the dominant allele in their genes, then they will show the dominant characteristic or the, the characteristic that is considered to be dominant. Okay, so if we have a look over here at uh, our flowers, we can see that 
both of the purple flowers have what we have the big A, okay? So a big A, we say, we say is dominant, and that refers to the purple flower color. Now our little a, we say is recessive, and if the individual has a big A, they will always show that purple flower color. However, if they have two of the little a's, then they will show that white flower color. And okay, we can see that again expressed at the bottom here, that the big A, big A with this flower, it's purple, big A, little a, this flower is also purple. Now because this flower here doesn't have the dominant uh, allele, it shows the recessive trait, which is white. So the last two terms that we need to distinguish between are heterozygous and homozygous. And this is one of my favorite little memes to use in this particular section of the Blueprint of Life topic. Okay, so heterozygotes, we want to make sure that we look at the terminology in it, zygous, not zygotes. But it's just a little bit of fun to show that they are possessing both of the, um, the characteristics because they have uneven alleles. So let's have a look at the terminology a little bit closer. So here we've got the three different flowers from the previous uh, couple of slides again, but this time we've got the, the chromosome pairs being shown as well. So with our first flower, let's get rid of that, we have two purple alleles. Now we call this homozygous. So homo means the same, and zygous refers to alleles, okay? So this flower here has two of the same alleles. Then when we have a look at the second flower, we've got one purple and one white allele. So we call this flower here heterozygous, hetero meaning different. And again, zygous referring to the alleles. So even though they have two different alleles, remember that purple, whoop, the purple allele is dominant, the flower turns out to be purple. And in this last example here, we have two white alleles this time. So again, homozygous meaning the same. And because that dominant allele isn't present, we end up with the recessive trait, which is white. Okay, so homo and hetero are the two terms that you need to know. They do come up quite a bit in science. So homo simply means being the same and hetero meaning different and then the zygous part of the word is refers to the alleles. So one last thing that we need to look at, not specifically mentioned on the syllabus, but we need to have an understanding of these terms before we can move on to looking at Mendelian crosses is the two terms genotype and phenotype. So a lot of the questions that we will come across will use that language in order to provide us with information for the question. So here we've got our three flowers with the three chromosome pairs again, but this time we've assigned letters to each of the different alleles. So remember a few slides back when we were looking at dominant and recessive, we said a dominant characteristic is usually associated with a capital letter and a recessive characteristic is associated with a lowercase letter. So here we've got big A, big A, which the big A is our purple. Therefore, we can say that the genotype of this flower is big A, big A. Then the genotype of our second flower, okay, is big A, little a. And the genotype of our third flower is little a, little a. So the way to remember what we mean by genotype is to look at the word again. So gen we can refer to as genes. And we know that genes, the alternate form of our genes are our alleles. So the genotype simply asks for the allele combination that a particular, uh, particular organism has. So what about phenotype? So we can see here that the genotype of the three flowers is different. However, these two flowers have the same characteristic or the same outward view that we can actually see that these two are purple, whereas this one here is white. So phenotype, we'll write this up here, phenotype, if we look at the pH, is the physical trait that we see, okay? So even though these two flowers have the same, sorry, have different genotypes, because they both have a big A in their genotype, their phenotype is the same because it is the dominant phenotype. 
okay? And then our little a, little a over here has a different phenotype being the white. So genotype is our gene or our allele combination and our phenotype are the physical traits that we see.